Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is a tough one. Let's see if we can figure it out together. This is from Ken, K6CED, okay? He says, hello, Dave, I'm experiencing interference on a number of the HF bands, primarily 10, 15, and 20. And those are three that we like to have available because the DX is hot right now, okay? We're at the peak of the solar cycle. It says, I do not have solar panels installed on my roof, but many neighbors do. He's in California, and there's a lot of that in California. I do have 200-watt panels ground-mounted for charging my two paralleled lithium iron phosphate station batteries. And that's great. That's great. By the way, that's how I work, too. I've got a 250-watt panel right through that wall. And right down here is 100-watt-hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and it powers the station. And my solar controller is a little tiny box right up here. I've got, this keeps track of the panel output, it's 24 volt panel, and I got one amp coming in. So this is the charge controller right here, it's very small, no knobs or anything on it. And it works beautifully. It simply offers 14.6 volts, which is about right here. It offers 14.6 volts to the battery, and then this is how much charging current there is. And by the way, it doesn't cause any noise at all on the thing. I've disconnected all incoming power to the home and turned off the small solar charging systems for my station batteries. The interference was not reduced at all. Contacted Southern California Edison Company, the power supplier out there. They promptly sent a crew out and concluded that their system was not the culprit. Yeah, of course, they always do. The interference is at a maximum when my Mosley Mini 32, it's a beam antenna, is pointed in my neighbor's home direction. Their house is about 100 feet from my radio room and about 150 feet from my antenna. Ferrites of different types have not helped. I've also submitted a complaint form to the FCC regarding the interference and the local findings from Southern California Edison and my work. Received a response and case number within two days. Yeah, well, okay, you've got a case number. It's gonna take a while. So my question is, does the FCC have the authority? Yes, they do. And the wherewithal, no, they don't, to enforce the interference rules on solar panel owners and installers. From my perspective, the solar interference is no different than an unlicensed radio operator generating interference. Yeah, but good luck explaining that to your neighbor. Note, contacting the neighbor will provide no help as they are not knowledgeable of such issues and just use the system as installed by Sunrun. Thank you in advance from Ken. Here's what I do. Bake a dozen cupcakes. Go over to your neighbor's house, hand over the cupcakes, and tell them they've been such a good neighbor for a long time, you know? And then say you would like them to do an experiment just to see what happens to rule out the possibility that their solar panels are causing interference. By this point, you'll be halfway through the cupcakes. What you want them to do is for just a moment, completely disconnect the solar panels. Turn them off, take them out of the system. There is a switch somewhere that will do that. If they don't know where it is and you don't know where it is, contact the Sunrun company. You may have to pay them, you know, for a service call or something to come out, shut the thing down, See if it's causing the interference. So it means you'll need to have another ham back at your station. You both have two meter radios to see what can happen. Solar panels are part 15 devices from FCC's point of view, which means they may not cause more legal language. They must not cause harmful interference to other users of the band and they must accept any harmful interference they may get from others. This usually is for televisions and stuff like that. Now, the reason I mention this is because your neighbors have no obligation to assist you 
in any way. So if you're on very good terms doing this experiment, you'll be able to say definitively if their solar panels are the problem or not. If they are, now you and Sunrun can start talking because they know what part 15 is, believe me. And they will have the responsibility of getting the emissions on that thing down. Good luck because solar panels are a hot commodity in California and elsewhere, as you know. Getting them to be quiet can be rough, can be rough. Okay, so good luck with that. Uh, I don't know how many pans of cupcakes you're going to go through, but uh, you want to come out of this with a stronger neighbor. Phrase everything you do as a question. You know, may I? Can we just check? Uh, something like that. If you try to get on your high horse and say that the FCC doesn't allow it and you're responsible to correct it, Boom, the door closes, the cupcakes will get thrown back at you. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. This is not a social networking site. This is the original kind of social networking, which is called knocking at your neighbor's door. I know that hasn't been done in years, but you want to try that. Now, what if it turns out their house is not the source of your problem? Well, try other things. There are some systems that will take the noise from a sense antenna and subtract it off the main antenna. They work a little. You may have to limit your band activity because of it. I mean, we all have to live with our neighbors. There was a time back in ancient times when six meters was a lot hotter. Six meters, by the way, is the old channel one for television. So if you ever wondered what happened to channel one and why all the TV started at channel two, that's why. Channel one is the six meter ham band. And ham radio transmitters back then were quite noisy on the TV. They called it television interference or Tennessee Valley Indians. Now it's on the other foot. Hams are having trouble with the neighbors and so on, creating problems. A problem that could be somewhere around there that you won't see is grow lights. Lots of people like to do hydroponics at home. And I believe marijuana is legal in there. I don't know if it's legal to grow your own. It is here in Colorado. You're allowed to grow your own marijuana to a degree. And so people get the grow lights and those grow lights from the Chinese manufacturers were put together not paying any attention to the RFI that would come out of them. So you've got a problem that is an issue. Now, you also have available to you the help from the ARRL. You contact your local leader, they're listed in the pages of QST right up front, and talk to the person who is your division director and tell them the problem. The ARRL has people in reserve who are really good at this sort of stuff who for free can come out and give you ideas, try things and so on. That's one of the lesser known services that the ARRL offers. So take advantage of that. The most important thing is my favorite word in amateur radio and that is to persevere. Don't give up just because they don't like your cupcakes, okay? Keep working on these neighbors and so on and so forth. What you're asking of them is not much, just turning those panels on and off. And at night, you know, I don't know how bright it is in your part of California, but at night, those panels aren't working. There's very little voltage across them. If the noise continues, and it's no different from daytime. It may very well not be the solar panels. So there you have it. Those are some thoughts on the idea, maybe give you some ideas. And if you need one, my wife can provide a cupcake recipe. So until we next meet, 73.